welcome from my side to this uh, session on uh, new technologies for wholesale central bank uh, money settlement. My name is uh, Ulrich Binzel again, and I'm the Director General of Market Infrastructures and Payments in the ECB. Our directorate acts as uh, operator, overseer and catalyst. And one of the basic uh, tasks that we have is to promote uh, the smooth operation of payment systems, which is even in the um, statutes of the ECB, so in the EU treaty. And settlement in central bank money, which is the most uh, safe and risk-free asset and liquid asset, is a cornerstone of payments and the smooth operation of a payment system and that we believe holds uh, both in the wholesale and in a certain sense also in the retail space and as central bank we have the the privilege to be able to issue central bank money and to offer um, it in systems in which it can be transferred for straight payments but also for example for delivery versus payment uh, in t2s so we offer T2, uh, the RTGS system, uh, T2S, allowing for DVP settlement in central bank money and uh, TIPS as a retail uh, payment uh, settlement uh, system 24-7 instantaneous uh, settlement. We also, as you know, have a project on uh, digital euro, which would be electronic uh, central bank money for retail purposes. And uh, yeah, as a digital euro project illustrates in the retail payment space, we try to look into the future and, uh, and you know, think on how uh, the forms of central bank money can remain uh, fit for purpose for the future. If uh, central bank money would not be fit for purpose any longer one day, and uh, because maybe we would stick exclusively to a technology which is no longer demanded, then it would be used uh, less and less. And we may end up in a system in which uh, central bank money is uh, marginal and uh, the architecture of the monetary system would become unstable. I mean, some people say, that retail CBDC is not needed because um, there are convenient electronic um, payment solution, you know, by the private sector. But um, let's let's not forget, private money is today a convertibility promise into central bank money. So this convertibility promise into central bank money holds the monetary system together. You know, we are not in the times of the gold standard any longer in which, uh, you know, you can say it's a universal convertibility promise into gold. Everything is a convertibility promise today into central bank money. That's the only anchor of the monetary system. And the test of convertibility that is inherent to private money uh, needs to be a real one, a continuous one and not an abstract one that can be forgotten because central bank money would uh, no longer uh, be used. And uh, yeah, in the case of retail CBDC, again, we only offer so far retail central bank money in the form of uh, banknotes. So sometimes I say uh, half joking that uh, this is a 17th century technology. Some people say, Retail CBDC is not needed again. So then I say, okay, you want the central bank to stick to 17th century technology only. Why would the central bank be the only one who, who should do that? So that's the debate on retail CBDC. In the space of wholesale central bank money, things are a bit different. I mean, there we have uh, electronic uh, money for quite a while for um, I don't know, 50 years, 80 years, but um, but there's a discussion on DLT for a few years in the field of financial markets of uh, settlement, and uh, many believe that DLT is uh, very promising. 
and yeah, DLT contains the word distributed ledger and in our name there's a word central central bank so how does distributed and central uh, go together question mark so is maybe the merit of DLT for central bank money less obvious but um, of course if DLT ecosystems develop in financial markets then the question arises you know what is the the payment lag where does the payment lag come from and uh, the payment lag would uh, presumably yeah could could be integrated into a DLT ecosystem or is integrated in the form of something like stable coins um but um if this you know sort of ecosystem would over time become very large very relevant then the question re-emerges how to ensure the key role of uh, central bank uh, money so how to bring to uh, together the world of central bank money and of uh, dlt based uh, financial market infrastructures at least someday in the future in the scenario that um, dlt indeed um, you know holds its promises and becomes uh, more and more important so that's uh, that's the context of the exercise we are we are doing and we are presenting today so we can go to the next slide yeah so we are investigating uh, concretely how a central bank um, money settlement can take place um, in the context of dlt being used um, and there we had established um, market contact group which is uh, chaired by Holger Neuhaus who will be one of the subsequent speakers and there we had set up a dialogue to understand the market uh, needs really in this field so there was an exercise of collecting input and um, yeah the, that was the first step understanding what uh, markets believe um, is uh, is there in terms of DLT wholesale financial market infrastructures coming and secondly what is the role of uh, central bank money and what are the preferences wishes of the market towards uh, central bank, bank uh, money availability and uh, that also this demand this also became relevant in the context of the DLT uh, pilot regime where one could also you know ask how how can we in this context uh, offer central bank money to make uh, experiments or trials um, more more meaningful and uh, yeah so if we move to the next slide so the question is of course how do you bring again together this world of central bank money and uh, DLT and uh, here we you know came came up uh, and that's not very creative it's uh, just the different combinations you can imagine but with uh, five different uh, possibilities and uh, the two on the left of this slide are the ones where the money leg remains on a central ledger basically and there we have two approaches one is that the central ledger is uh, basically t2 and the other one is that it is a uh, sort of tips related um, hash link as it is called and it as it will be explained in much more detail in this session um, so here you combine basically central um, a central ledger with dlt and on the other side outside the central bank and you have to link the two of course in an effective manner and safe manner um, the other approaches on the right side of the slide all also rely on dlt for the um, central bank uh, money uh, leg and uh, there are three possibilities in principle one is um, what we call interoperability that there are two um, basically DLT platforms, one in uh, central bank money and the other ones in uh, yeah, containing what uh, the operator of the DLT allows on them and the two interact uh, through some interoperability mechanism. 
preserving the benefits um, of uh, of uh, DLT by making this interoperability, of course, uh, fully effective. And uh, the that's one possibility. The other one is we have an integrated approach where the central bank controls, uh, establishes the DLT platform in which not only central bank money is, but also other assets. So that has, of course, the advantage of integration, but uh, puts uh, a lot of burden on the central bank because it takes basically both uh, both sides. And on the asset side, there could be a lot of uh, diversity and uh, complexity uh, to manage. Um, and the last approach is basically that you put the central bank money on a DLT run by other parties and that could be um, yeah it could be permissioned blockchains or permissionless ones even um, in theory so yeah then you can see that we highlight here three out of the five approaches because we don't in the forthcoming trials and experiments offer all five we only offer the three which are highlighted so not the second and third one on the right side yeah and uh, we yeah we are progressing we are very concrete now in our plans so next year from may to november we will focus on those what we call interoperability type solutions the two on the left the one the upper one on the right of the previous slide and we will have uh, experiments and trials. Experiments are defined as mock settlements on the cash side um, in test environments. So um, while trials are actual settlement of transaction central bank money um, in uh, the production environment uh, at a limited scale, however, and for a limited period of time to allow to control it uh, more cl closely and uh, i think yesterday we published the expression of interest the call sorry the call for expression of interest you have to express interest and uh, register uh, using this link and the templates uh, which are there and um, then there may be yeah there will be a process i mean there have been eligibility criteria and of course we cannot fully anticipate the extent of demand so we will see if we can uh, satisfy all the demands or if there's uh, capacity constraints kicking in somewhere, then we will see how to handle this. Um, and yeah, just as a caveat uh, at the end, the Eurosystems exploratory work does not constitute a commitment by the Eurosystem to provide uh, such a solution in production um, in the future and to change the current uh, infrastructure. So there is, uh, you know, policy work to take place. There is, there would be decisions that would have to be taken. This is really, and, and those, uh, let's say, analysis of uh, what could eventually become a project uh, one day and become a reality one day. It's a discussion also that to, to be uh, undertaken it's a discussion, I would say, in parallel to experiments and trials that we will do, because uh, obviously um, we need to understand better the technicalities, the technical constraints, the feasibility in parallel to um, understanding further what is eventually the role that we may want to implement for such uh, solutions in the future. I think that brings me to the end of my introductory remarks so thank you for your attention